بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بر حبت فلّہ فرام سم آف دا ٹریٹس دیٹ وی ہیو ٹو بی ویئر آف اینڈ وی شو بی کاشیز آف اینڈ وی شو بی کانشیز آف از دوز فیس بک ٹریٹس دوز ٹریٹس دیٹ وی ایگزبٹ آن سوشل میڈیا and the adab or the conduct that is befitting of the believer on social media. Because social media is a way that you interconnect with other human beings, you form communities, you form spaces in which you can express yourself, and those spaces can be spaces of good or those spaces can be spaces of evil. And the Prophet ﷺ also warned us and told us to have good company, have good companionship. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Marri ala deena khalilihi That a, uh, a person is on the religion or the way of his companions or of his companion. And so it shows us, Ahabat Tafilah, that it's very important that we have good companionship and that we exhibit good, righteous traits and conduct, especially outwardly. And of course, inwardly, but especially when you're out in the public sphere. So for the first category of people I want to uh, address is those du'at, is people who are callers to Islam and callers to goodness, that they are under even a greater scrutiny from others. So it's very important that their conduct is befitting. And one of the things which I observe from some of the callers is that they post their personal information out there, meaning they advertise their wives and spouses. They, uh, you know, do all this outwardly, uh, express themselves and make themselves even more vulnerable, even if they're unaware of it, that these things can come back and be a cause for people to belittle or degrade you, or people can attack you through those means, or people can try to destroy and break up even your family. So it's very important to keep your private sphere private and not put it on social media, especially those people who are callers. Another point I want to mention is also a shortcoming that I find with some of the du'at is that they put their personal philosophies and ideologies which may not always be in accordance with Islam or may have some aspects which are totally contradictory towards Islam. If they possess these types of ideologies or if they have other personal views that do not need to be reflected out in the greater Muslim community, they should keep those in other spheres. They should keep those in other places, in other domains, instead of putting their other ideologies and beliefs and personal habits and sometimes even sins out in the public sphere because it is quite a dangerous uh, thing to do. Uh, the second category of people I wanted to quickly address is the sisters that we've talked about this before. And that we often find, unfortunately, many, uh, some of our sisters that perhaps they're eager to get married or perhaps they, it's just some characteristics that they carry from their time uh, prior to Islam or from the society they live in or whatever the various reasons and even from their nature that women like to beautify themselves and women like to be, uh, have men acknowledge that and that is a great power and weapon that women possess over men because the prophet sallallahu said uh in al awwal fitna bani israel kana fi nisa that the verily the first fitna or trial that befell the children of israel is is uh the women so women are a test for men women are a test for men uh and so with that being a case and the biggest test of course is through their beauty and their beautification and that can be tempting and that can be destructive and that can destroy many men and knock them off balance shift them turn them and twist them and that is the power that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the women uh over the 
men. And so what we see is some of our sisters, they use their ability to seduce and tempt by displaying their beauty, going, you know, one minute they have niqab on, next minute they're in a khimar, or maybe not even a khimar, in a bodysuit, and perhaps even a miniskirt, and or perhaps in, you know, all kind of things, even probably to the extent of bathing suits, wallahu musta'an. And so this is muharram, it's impermissible, and it is a way that sisters belittle themselves because there is nothing more beautiful truly no matter how we are our eyes are flash you know we we love the flashiness we love what whatever your concept of beauty is as a man we love to see the beauty of the women from their various features and what have you but truly when you see a believing woman who covers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I know myself that there is a type of beauty that is that you cannot describe and that is, uh, you know, put in its right and proper place. And obviously we shouldn't be staring at that. But the point being is that's a whole nother level. And because the one who shows all her beauty, there's nothing left. You've seen it all. You've seen everything she has to offer, really. So the one who covers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given her that beauty, then she has a, a double uh, type of beauty to offer. And so the other point I want to mention with regards to the sisters is the foul language. You see a lot of foul language on the social media. Facebook sisters, you know, they're wearing niqab and then they're using, you know, all kind of terms from jahiliya and, and swear words is most importantly swear words and words that are totally befitting and totally ugly and totally uh out of pocket and out of control and so ahabatifillah this is also not befitting for the believing uh, men or women and this goes for the men as well some characteristics i see among some of the brothers and so this is not to talk about everyone except myself because i have plenty of faults and sins as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said all the children of adam commit sins or mistakes and the best of those who sin are those who repent so we want to be of the Tawabin, those people who repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. And so what I see from the brothers, some of the brothers, is we see the, as we mentioned, the foul language, you know, men, big, beautiful beards, short thobes, whatever else, and speaking the things in order to relate to the people, speaking in some of the worst, uh, with some of the worst speech of jahiliya, cursing, foul language, and other uh, use of, of bad language and speaking ill of others. Another point I want to mention, a last point, is the brother's criticism of the sisters. And likewise, the sisters' criticisms of the brothers out in the social media sphere. Meaning that they go in and they use language which is unbefitting. And one thing I notice with some of the people, especially those people from my tribe, meaning African Americans, that they... Uh, that you find some who, due to the self-hatred, and these are effects that are remnants of slavery and a long history that we have in America of uh, being attacked mentally, spiritually, physically, socially as a community in every which way, which is well documented and has come in, you know, systemically from the system, from the government, the police, <laughs> the military, to every aspect of society, to where uh, black men were lynched for looking the wrong way or being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and likewise, even black women. So we have a disease, some of us still have this disease of self-hatred. So what we find is some of the brothers that they attack our sisters, even though the sisters may have some open faults, but the way they speak about them and the language they use uh, and the, the, the type, it smells of a, 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 a racism, we would say, if it came from another race. And even internally, it is unbefitting for the believer to use this type of language and these types of descriptions for their believing Muslim sisters. Even if they're weak in Iman, even if they're showing 
some foulness, it will be better and more befitting to address them privately if you have the opportunity to or in a general sense. But to just go in on the sisters every post as we see the brothers going, going and writing long posts and a silsila, you know, a series of posts to attack their sisters is not befitting for someone who's already maybe weak in Iman, you're just pushing them further away and causing them perhaps to even be uh, more disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is not the uh, intent of commanding the good and the forbidding the evil. Because part of commanding the good and forbidding the evil is that you're looking at the masalih, and the mufasid. You're looking at the good, the benefits, and you're weighing the harm when you're doing this. And we know that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam yaqul min ra'a minkum munkarin fali ghayruhu biyad fa in lam yastati' fa bilisanihi fa in lam yastati' fa biqalbihi wa dhalika adaw fa liman ruahu muslim sa hadith in sahih muslim a hadith of Abi Sayyid al-Khadri radiyallahu ta'an who said I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying uh, that whoever sees an evil, change it with his uh, hand. And if he's unable to do so, then change it with his tongue. And if he's unable to do so, then he should change it with his heart. And that's the weakest form of Iman. So it shows us, we know that this is an Im immensely important religious duty, but there are ways and there's wisdom in how you approach uh, one another. And that it should be a means of causing good and getting the maqsad, the intent which is to bring someone back by calling them to good. You don't just attack someone, belittle someone, make examples of someone, and destroy someone thinking that you're going to bring them closer to Allah and closer back to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So it's very important that we realize this ahabit tafillah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yaqul khayran uli yasmat. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said whoever believes in Allah in the day uh, uh, of judgment then say good or keep silent. So we already know how that relates to what we're talking about. If you have nothing good to post, you have nothing good to put in your Instagram or what have you, then keep silent. It's better to refrain. Uh, in the hadith of uh, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna mimman adraka nasu min kalamin, min kalamin nabuwa al-ula idha lam tastahi fasna' Mashit. The Prophet ﷺ said, from what the people found uh, from this speech of the first prophets, alayhim afdal salatu is that uh, if you have no shame, then do as you please. Letting us know, ahabat tafillah, that, that shyness is a virtue in Islam. Shyness is from iman, as the Prophet ﷺ uh, said and so being shy and being and speaking good and speaking when necessary instead of excessive speech and instead of belittling and attacking one another, uh, you know, is uh, which are traits which are unbefitting for the believer. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.